In this live self-defense training video, we're gonna talk about police shortages, carry your own self-defense tool. I want you to use this simple self-defense tool. It's very effective. It's just a stick and you can train with this 18 inch stick. And then if you can't carry this with you for some reason, you can pick up any other stick that's about the same length and defend yourself with these techniques. So what you're really learning when you learn how to use this stick, when you have to defend yourself when there is a police shortage, is the skill of self-defense. You're taking that skill with you, whether you can take the stick or not. You can take the stick in most places that you go. You just throw it in a backpack or you carry it in your hand, you carry it in your car. And if somebody asks you what it's for, you tell them it's a massage tool used to roll out your muscles. You can tell them that you use it to bake with. You can tell them that you are a woodworker and you whittle or whatever. Tell them whatever you want. Come up with a good idea for carrying the stick. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is there are two ways that you're gonna hold it. You're either gonna hold it with the small side coming out of your pinky, and in this technique, you have these slashing strikes that come at an angle or come horizontally or come vertically, or you can thrust this way, you can swing it in this way, and then using that back side, you leave a little bit there to stick it right into his nose or his teeth or his throat for self-defense. You strike using the whole body. Using the whole body means turning through your shoulders and hips, extending the arm, and then stepping into the strike, closing the distance. So you have those downward strikes, you have the angle strike coming off of the shoulder, you have your horizontal strike coming in and out, and you're targeting what you can remove or destroy for self-defense. These principles come from Tim uh, Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer. I put a link below, to the first link is for this, but if you wanna see Tim Larkin's when uh, violence is the answer book, it's the second link below. Now, when it comes to this, if you wanna make your own, this is just a dowel rod you pick up at any do-it-yourself store, cut it in half, sand it really well, and soak it in oil. This is extremely heavy and extremely durable because it's been soaking in oil. I soak them for at least three days. So from this position, you have these basic strikes coming in, practice over and over again, coming at your angle, then coming through, horizontally and then coming down vertically on top. You're trying to remove his ability to see or breathe temporarily, permanently, his ability to stand upright, his ability to stab you with a knife when you smash and break the joint on the wrist, the joint on the elbow, or even the upper arm, the lower arm. All that is possible with this hard piece of oak. From this position, you can also thrust to create distance to keep him back, especially if he does have a blade, something like this, you can see that you still have reach advantage with this 18 inch Japanese Tanbo, which is just a, an 18 inch stick. This one is an inch in diameter. You can get them made an inch. This is an inch and a quarter. An inch is just a little bit less. And of course it won't weigh as much. The heavier it is, the harder it hits for self-defense. But from this position, he pulls out that blade. If you don't have any other choice, you can't get out of there. You can't run fast enough. You're gonna stick this right through his nose or into his throat, into the solar plexus, or again, you can smash coming into the hand. Now, the other way to hold it is gonna be like this, so that this now can protect your forearm, and you can let that blade hit this if you had to block, or use that to strike in through the side of his head, into the face, into the teeth for self-defense. From here, you're also gonna be able to thrust with the short end. The benefit of holding it like this is it's gonna be hard for him to take it out of your hand. You had it like this, he might be able to grab it, and then you have to wrestle with him, get your other hand, twist, and smash into his face for self-defense. But if you pull it out and you hold it in this position first, when you thrust, you can still create massive, massive uh, force, maximum amount of power coming into his nose. You can swing using your whole upper body, again, turning through your shoulders and hips, taking a step in, and this hard piece of oak smashing into the side of his head, into his temple, his ear, his jaw, into his neck, maybe into his ribs. If you're seated and he's standing, you can do a lot of damage this way. You can extend this part by twisting and flicking that wrist out. Now you're striking with more of the edge of the stick right across his face as you bring this through. You can bring it into the face and into the belly, coming over and under, bracing here first. So you're striking this way, hard for him to stop that, coming into his groin 
all from this position here. Now you can also turn so you're holding in two hands with his split grip and smash through his teeth, through his nose this way. You can box the ears to the side. You can take those two hands, maybe he's behind you, stick that in this way, or you're twisting your whole upper body, bringing that force into the side to the head, knocking him back, knocking him out for self-defense. Or of course, you can hold it this way and bring it straight up and in. It's just a simple uh, self-defense tool. This is how you use this self-defense tool. If there is a police shortage and you find yourself waiting, even if there isn't a police shortage and <laughs> you happen to be in an area and you need some help and you've called 911, but the guy's right there, it's gonna take the police two, three, four minutes, maybe 10 minutes to respond. You have no other choice, but you have a stick, or better yet, you have the skill of fighting with a stick. I was looking around today before I started this video, just in my space here, I found the toilet plunger. That's a hard piece of wood, like the old style toilet plunger, the toilet bowl cleaner, hard, uh, flexible, but strong piece of plastic. Um, an umbrella, the short umbrella, you can hold that the same way. You can strike. The, the whole point of the way that this works is it's not necessarily the material of the stick. It's the fact that you can hold the stick in a tight grip and turning through your body, pushing it out this way, out like that. Yeah, T.S. Long says he's out at night. He likes to carry the, his stick, which is the cane. That's a great uh, self-defense tool because it's so long. Thank you for that comment. Thank you guys for being here. I saw G. Carlton here. So a lot of you guys here earlier when you first came in, but I wanted to get to these techniques so you had something to practice with your short stick. And again, I always say invest your time before you invest your money. Find an old broom that's broken or you know the, the, it needs to be replaced and then just cut it down, especially if it's wood. Or you know, go to the store, spend less than uh, $12. You can get yourself a, um, a dowel rod. This is less than $12. This, the oil, uh, question is what kind of oil I use. I use butcher block oil. I had a lot of you order the Yuwara palm stick and they haven't gone out yet. They've been soaking in oil now. I finally got them all done. There were so many orders. I was under, not expecting that many orders. So it took me a while to get them all cut and shaped and, and all that stuff. So they're now soaking in oil and they will go out. I was hoping to get them out uh, yesterday, but it looks like we won't be able to get them all packaged and sent out until this week. If you do want one of mine, I do sell these, it's a first link below. Or again, make your own. You don't have to spend your money or spend a lot of money. I don't sell them for that much, but you can get it for even less if you make it yourself. Or find a nice piece of uh, wood outside, you know, a tree branch, something like that. Or you know, be uh, inventive, come up with your own wood. Anything that's harder, don't go with. Uh, the palm stick is, if you send me an email, I can send you the link to the palm stick. Or if you look at the palm stick in, I think it was one of the earlier videos. Or I'll go back, I'll put that, I'll put the palm stick in this description. If you want to order it when we're done with this live stream, I'll go back and I'll put it in there. And then um, if you want that, just, they're, they're uh, also not that expensive. I'd show you what they look like, but I, 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 like I said, they're all soaking right now. I do have a few extras that are made that'll go out the next week if you order them today. But this is the, um, this is the Tombow, the Japanese Tombow. It's 18 inches. And again, it's not the stick that you carry with you. You can. I carry one of these, um, I've got two in the car actually, one in the back, one in the front, and um, I've got one that lives in my bug out bag, my get home bag, I've got the palm, palm sticks, I carry one in the car, one in the bag, I always have extra ones, I just travel with it. The palm stick, it, I took through TSA uh, security, airport security, someone said, you won't be able to do that, I had no problem taking it through. On my last trip to Nashville, we just got back from Nashville a few weeks ago, I saw so many different types of walking sticks and canes, and I had heard from somebody that you had to, the TSA will only let you take on a folding cane now. That wasn't true. I saw every kind of walking stick and cane go through with, you know, the people were carrying it. They put the stick on the conveyor belt so they can, you know, x ray it or whatever, and they gave them one of the airport canes, and then on the other side, they handed them their cane right back and I saw people getting on the airplane. So you still can take your cane anywhere and everywhere you go. A stick like this, I don't know if you could get this onto TSA. I've never tried, I wouldn't try because I think they would probably take it. It's a, it looks a little bit too much like a stick you might hit somebody with. But 
in the airport and they don't have the magazines anymore in the in the planes that I fly on anyway but they used to have those airplane magazines in the back of the the maybe the nicer ones we took the, did the discount but maybe like a Delta or something they still have the Delta magazine but you can pick up a magazine or carry a magazine with you when you need to you hold it against your body and then you roll it tightly and then you hold that tightly and most magazines are about 10 to 12 inches and this is 18 inches, so you lose those other six to eight inches, but you still have a stick that you can effectively defend yourself with all of these techniques, and you're just using a magazine. And when you hold that magazine tightly, it's hard to cut, it's not gonna tear, it's not gonna fold, it's not gonna rip, unless it's a super thin magazine, but if it's really thin, it's one of those throwaway magazines, grab five or six of them, I've tried this, put them all together, roll them tightly, hold it, and you have a temporary self-defense stick. But the point is, learn the skills. The, these angle strikes first, and then the horizontal strikes, the vertical strikes coming down, the thrusting motion up and in. Think about sticking that up under his throat or into his nose or into his solar plexus or into his groin. That's a very effective strike, very fast. And then learn how to get two hands on it and smash this way, two hands and push like this coming down over the top, learn how to change your grip and hold it this way so it's hard for him to grab. And then thrust here, stick it in his ear like that, smack him across the face with it, stick it in his throat for self-defense, get two hands on it, smash him this way, all with a stick, and then roll up that magazine. You can't take your stick on the plane or you don't have the stick with you. Look around, find something. You'll find sticks everywhere. If you're at the gas station, pumping the gas, they have those dirty, nasty, in that water, the squeegee for your windshield that, that I, I've, only, I've seen people use them, it blows my mind. But you can use one of those. Those things are nearly indestructible. Has a nice, long, almost like a hatchet on the end, right? So you can use that for self-defense, or you can use the stick part of it. There are sticks everywhere. You can be in a restaurant, there's spatulas, go into the bathroom, plungers in there, pick it up. It might be nasty on one side, smack them with that but you can defend yourself, stick the plunger right in his face, and then hit him on the top of the head for self-defense. You're gonna insult the injury is what I was thinking of. Anyway, again, if you want one of these from me, um, I'll get it, I'll get it to you before Christmas. I got a bunch of these made. The link is below or make your own. And then if you need Tim Larkin's book, it's the best book on self-defense. I know Tim Miller's working on a book. I'm excited about that. He's also, he's our new self-defense expert for this channel. We did a video with him. Go look him up if you haven't seen it yet. I think the last video was with Tim where he talks about situational awareness and we expanded that idea about situational awareness everywhere. And go find, go follow his uh, channel. It's at Lionheart Skills. I think that's what it is. At Lionheart Skills. But Tim Miller, you type him up, you'll find him very quickly. He's one of the gurus, one of the old guys of uh, personal security, former Marine, Secret Service, uh, Homeland Security, this guy does it all. He's known everything, and he's a great instructor for this, too. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. Please put in the comment section below. This is how we grow as a community. Put in the comment section what sticks you find in your environment. What would you use to defend yourself? Once you learn how to do the basics, what can you pick up? And then go around. So thank you, uh, Werner, for, um, for your comment. Thank you. He said, Werner says thank you for this, this video. I think Werner's in South Africa place where we need more self-defense we have to defend ourselves when the police aren't there to help us so look around find the tools and then come back and yeah Ian says walking stick is his go-to but please put in the comment section not just the chat but in the comment section what sticks you find in your day-to-day -day that you would be able if you once you learn to define yourself with a stick what sticks will you use to defend yourself it can be your walking stick it can be your walking cane or Put in there all the short sticks. What are the short sticks that you can find? What improvised self-defense tool can you carry? And of course, some of you are gonna say, you know, this is all I need. And, you know, I have strong opinions about that. I uh, conceal carry myself everywhere I go. I believe in ABC, always be carrying. And when I go to certain places, I have to leave it in the car because it's not allowed. So in those non-permissive environments, what are you gonna use? Your answer, well, I just carry this. I won't go there. I call BS. You have to go certain places. You get, you have to serve ju jury duty. You're going into the courthouse and you can't carry this. What are you going to do if something happens there and 
the, 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 their security fails and you need to defend yourself. Think about self-defense, think about defending yourself, defending, yeah, Ian says uh, broom handle, quite common at home. Please, Ian, put that in the comment section too, um, but, but let me know. Yeah, Jacqueline says walking sticks and short stick in the house, a rolling bin, a rolling pin. Yeah, absolutely, rolling pins. I was uh, making some bacon this morning. I gotta get it from the bottom of the, the tray, from the bottom of the, uh, the oven. That's where our baking, our rolling pin lives. And I saw it this morning and I thought, man, that would hurt if you got hit with that. That's a very effective self-defense tool. But please put in the comment section below and then I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.